Hi guys, this is Mr. Rego, and welcome back to our serious beat the test video number four. Um, let's start question number ten. Uh, consider the figure below. I have a triangle. Okay, so let's read. P and Q are midpoints of AI and IR, respectively. Use the property of mid segments to find the perimeter of triangle AIR. So, properties of mid segments. What are you talking about? So. Here we have a mid segment. What is a mid segment? A mid segment is a, is a segment. Remember, they're saying that P and Q are midpoints. So P is a midpoint. That means this piece is equal to this piece, and Q is another midpoint. So that piece equal to that piece. Right now, I don't know if they're equal or not. So let's go by, by that. But they're saying the midpoints. So therefore, PQ is called something that's called a mid segment. What happens when a mid segment? PQ is mid segment, therefore PQ is half of the base. So if PQ is 5, my base is 10. AR is 10. Why? Because PQ is a mid segment. Okay, now let's look at the angles. Why are they giving me angles? All right, so they give me two angles. Let's find the third angle to see what happens with those angles. So I know that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle equals 180. Therefore, if I want to find the Third angle, I gotta do 180 minus the two angles that I know, which is 45 and minus 67.5. 180 minus 45 minus 67.5 gives me 67.5. That means these two angles on the bottom, those are base angles and they are congruent. They are equal. All right. If they're equal, then this triangle is an isosceles triangle. Therefore, this IR is equal to IA. They're equal. All right, so let's go back. If QR is 6.5 and Q is a midpoint, therefore, this top is also 6.5. Now, the whole thing, 6.5 plus 6.5, the whole thing is 13. But because this is an isosceles triangle, the other side has to be equal. So the other side is also 13. Remember, isosceles because my base angles are equal. So they're asking me for perimeter. Let's go. Perimeter, the, the base, which is 10, plus the right side, which is 13, plus the left side, which is 13. The perimeter is around, around the triangle, all around it. Therefore, my perimeter is 10 plus 13 and plus 3, that's equal to 36. Whatever units they give you is 36 units, and that's the perimeter. Okay, so question number 11. Identify the error or errors in the solution. Once you have identified the error, solve for the variables, then write the correct solutions. So the question is what are, what are x and y, but they're saying that there's mistakes in here. So let's see. This, first of all, this is a parallelogram. Okay, what are the values of x and y in the parallelogram of ABCD? So, if this is a parallelogram, these segments that they give me, those are diagonals. So, DB is a diagonal, AC is a diagonal. A property of a parallelogram is, is saying that diagonals bisect each other, which means DB bisects AC. Bisect means cuts that in two equal parts. But at the same time, AC divides or bisects db in two equal parts all right now i know so let's start so that means ae is congruent to ec because the diagonal is being bisected so ae is congruent is equal to ec ae is congruent to ec and this is 48 equals to ec is 3x AC is 3x. All right. Divided by 3, divided by 3, and I have 16. 48 divided by 3 is 16. And that's my first value. Okay? So it's not 18. This is wrong. The next one, the next diagonal is DE is congruent to EB. Remember, diagonals bisect each other. They're divided into equal parts. So DE equals from D to E equal to EB. All right, but what's DE? 
DE sixty four and EB EB using the arrow is two Y minus six. From there I gotta solve for Y. So plus six plus six fifty four and six is sixty. The six cancel out. I bring down two Y and then divide it by two, divide it by two. 30 equals to y. Okay, not 27. So let's look back at this thing. They're saying that CE equals DE. CE equals DE. No, they're taking two different diagonals. So that's, that's why it's wrong. Let's look at DE. BE from B to the, to the center, to the middle, is equal to AE. Oh no, they're saying that this segment is equal to that segment. No, that's wrong. Okay, so that's the reason they're wrong. You need to specify that. And then we divide our diagonals and that's the process. So X equals 16, Y equals 30. All right, let's go next. Okay, now we have question number 12 and very nice proof. Now this proof and many other proofs are solved the same way. Okay, so every single proof, they have statements and reasons. Most likely they give you a drawing so you can go back and check information. All right, and every single proof will give you a given information and they will ask you to prove something. So you have to, this is the question, you have to prove this. But this information is free. This is not for a fact that that's true. So let's start. So JKLM, JKLM is a parallelogram, right? So JKL, all right, the big one, the outside is a parallelogram. Okay, what else? PX and QX, they're congruent. So PX and QX, so this piece and this piece are congruent, all right. They asked me JP, JPLQ, JP, all right, they asked me the little one. They asked me to prove that this is a parallelogram. Okay, so right now uh, they're, they're nice and they're giving me a, a, a bank, a war bank on the bottom with possible answers. Statements and reasons, let's start. The first statement and reason 99% of the times, actually 100% of the time, is going, to be, is going to be starting with a given information. This is how you start. JKLM is a parallelogram and PEX is congruent to QX. This is the given information, my, my reason given. Next, J, JX is congruent to XL. JX, JX is congruent to XL. Okay, how do we know? So we go back and look at the, uh, the choices. Definition of a midpoint, JL and, P and QP uh, bisect each other. If diagonals bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, this sounds like the, the last reason. Diagonals of parallelogram bisect each other. There you go. So they're saying JX is congruent to XL. JX congruent to XL. They're saying that this piece is congruent to this piece. How do I know? I know that the big figure is a parallelogram. And I know that one of the properties is the diagonals M, K, and J, L bisect each other. Bisect each other means divide the uh, diagonal in two pieces. So my reason here is diagonals. This is reason number two. Diagonals of a program bisect each other. Okay, that comes over here. Uh, next. X is the midpoint of JL. X is the midpoint of JL. X is the midpoint of QP. X is the midpoint of JL. Okay. JL. X is the midpoint of JL. And X is the midpoint of QP. QP. Yeah, that's right. Remember, X is in the middle of between J and L. And X is in the middle between Q and P because those pieces are equal. What is that? midpoint 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 definition of a midpoint so that's going to be r3 this is our definition of midpoint it comes over here definition of a midpoint okay all right next oh blank but they're telling me definition of segment by sector so now i need to write the statement okay i already took two of them all right, let's check this too. Diagonals bisect each other, then the quadratic parallelogram. Now, this sounds like a reason. 
JL and QP bisect each other. JL, JL and QP bisect each other. Yes, look at this. Those pieces are the same. You see these two and these two, one on one. So they're bisecting each other. So that's the definition of bisector. Therefore, this is statement number four. Okay, JL and QP bisect each other. All right, last but not least. So now I have this. Okay, I already this one. Last but not least, JPLQ is a parallelogram. I just I just proved that these are are bisecting each other. And what is the property? Diagonals bisect each other. So yes, if diagonals bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, which is the question they asked me. So my reason number five is if diagonals bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And that's what they want here. Okay, so fill in the blanks. Thank you. This process is the same for every single proof. That's the uh, sequence you have to follow. Okay, you always go back to the drawing and see if it makes sense or not. And this is a logical process, one step at a time. And also, when you're doing a, um, a proof, make sure you read all the possible answers. Okay, and as soon as you use it, uh, don't cross it out, but you know, I already use it, so now you have something left. Um, okay, remember, uh, in every single video that I'm doing right now, just make sure that you stop as soon as you see the problem, stop, try to solve it, and then go over the video so you can double check with the video. All right, please like the video, subscribe. Uh, we're going next to our next video. Subscribe, like the video, uh, study please.